I will be reading from Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are a light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I just want to thank you all for coming and showing up. Uh, and especially, I want to give a special thank you to uh, the congregation for supporting the youth group in um, everything that we do with all our uh, trips and everything. Um, people like, like Jeff and Jenny Venable have been driving us to SYSs and on Tuesday and on Tuesday nights. And then Jeffrey Jester has also been teaching our classes. On Wednesday night so without all of you there uh, we wouldn't get to go on trips like uplift and these are literally my favorite weeks of the entire year uh, so as many of you know myself and the youth group took a week-long trip to uplift at Harding University and so I feel like a lot of times y'all don't get to see what we actually do on youth trips like you know that we went but you never get to see what we did and if we actually learned anything so I want to speak tonight, not only to show you how much fun we had, but to talk about what we learned and how y'all can apply it, just like we're trying to apply it. So the theme for Upload this year was Illuminate, as I have up here on the screen. Uh, and as Mark mentioned earlier, all the scriptures tonight were from the Sermon on the Mount. We covered almost the entire sermon on the Mount over the week, but we just we focused the most on the scripture that Tucker read before I got up here. Uh, so I'm going to show y'all some of our best moments. Uh, and pictures from Uplift this year. Uh, so here are our first pictures. Uh, this was the day that we left. We were just having a lot of fun. We were singing Kumbaya on the bottom picture. Don't ask me why, but we were. Uh, there's, a pic there's a picture of me and Tabby with our favorite game called Spike Ball that we played a lot of at camp. And on the right is proof of me beating Patrick and Tabby in Go Fish on the way to camp. I just had to put that up there. Uh, here's pictures of us eating at Uplift. So, when you go to Uplift, it's almost like you're in college. You're staying in the dorms, you're eating at the cafeteria, you're going to class in the classroom. So it's really like an experience somewhat like college. We ate in the cafeteria uh, almost every single night. Uh, on the left, you see some pictures of us in Bible class taking notes. And on the right, you see pictures of us in Freddy's. Uh, every, night, every night after worship, the whole group goes out uh, for a group Devo and just talk about the things that really stood out to us that day. So those are those are some of the best parts of our days at Uplift. Uh, here's some pictures of us playing games. So like at Uplift, you have like three hours in the afternoon to just hang out. It's called free time. So there's so many different games. We're playing racquetball and all these different kind of games. So it's a lot of fun during those three hours. Uh, here's some more pictures of us eating. Uh, on the left, you see the last. Second to last night, we had food. They had food trucks set up, so we had a little bit of variety in our dinner. And on the right is a picture of us at a steakhouse. We have a we have a little tradition where every last night of uplift, we go out and treat ourselves to a little steak dinner. So that's always nice. Uh, here's just some more pictures of us hanging out. I don't know why Tucker is choking Aiden, but I'm just gonna leave it there. I don't know why. Um, and here's our pictures from the last day. Uh, there's all of us in the bus. And uh, there's a picture of me and my friends from Camp Curios. So, yeah, uh, we had we had an amazing time, as you can tell. Uh, here's our final here's our final group picture of all the people that went to Uplift from Jackson Street, Magnolia. Uh, so we had I had a lot of time to bond with all the boys, and I can now say that I know more about the boys that went to Uplift with me than I ever wanted to know. Uh, we spent way too much time in the dorm, so. Um, but through all the late night talks and staying up to like 2 in the morning, we, we just grew so much closer than we were before. And although we had, we had too much fun playing racquetball and cracking a bunch of dumb jokes, we also learned a lot. Uh, so if you all turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, uh, the verse that Tucker read, I'm just going to reread it again. Chapter 5, Matthew says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, 
and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Uh, several years ago, Eugene Peterson wrote what is essentially a devotional Bible. Uh, and in his little devotional over these verses, he uses a lot of beautiful imagery that I want, uh, that I want y'all to look at some of it and just pay attention to the images that he tries to paint in his head. Uh, he says, you're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to put, hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. And now that I've put you here on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house, be, gener be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. So now I want to share with you my two biggest takeaways from Uplift this year. Uh, so number one is a little light shine bright. Uh, I got this little point from, uh, there's a speaker on the second night of Uplift, and this was the main point of his lesson. So one example of someone being a little light that shine bright is Tabitha. Uh, so up on the screen I have this verse from Acts chapter, th Acts chapter 9, verse 36. And so Tabitha, she's only mentioned in seven verses in the entire Bible, and this is the first one. Uh, so the verse says, Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. Uh, so here we see an example of someone who I would say is very essential to the storyline of the Bible. Like when you think of people who shine their lights, you're not thinking of Tabitha. Uh, so even though her, might, her light might seem little to us, and we might think that she didn't, much, she didn't make very much of an impact since she's only mentioned in this one little place. I've, I've just got to think, if the only words to describe you are that you were full of good, char good works and acts of charity, I've got to think that you made a difference. So even though she's not mentioned that much, she took the opportunities and, just, and the strength that God gave her, and she shined her light. And even though her light only shines to us in one verse, I just I, I, I know that she has such a big impact on the people around her. Uh, so this little phrase, whenever the speaker said this, it just immediately resonated with me, and I think most of the youth group. So as I mentioned, every night we go out after worship and we have a little talk about what we learned. And this phrase was brought up by multiple, multiple different people that night. Um, and I think this has such an impact on us because of our own fear and our own self-doubt. You know, Satan wants us to be afraid to shine our light. Satan wants us to say, oh, I'm, I'm not good enough to shine my light. Like, nobody's ever going to want to see me if I shine my light. Like, it's not going to make any, any difference. Satan doesn't want us to have confidence in ourselves and in our own God. And for me personally, there have been so many times where I've been, that I've become a victim to these lies that Satan put in my head. And there's still times in my life where I feel like if I'm going to shine my light, that it's not going to have very much of an impact. Or that I'm not big enough or important enough to shine my light. But I have to constantly remind myself and work on not being afraid to shine my light because shining our light is a command. In Matthew 5, verse 16, Jesus says, let your light shine before others. He, does, he doesn't say, let your light shine before others, but only in certain circumstances. Or let your light shine before others, but only when you really feel like it. There's, there's no but. There is no second part. It's a continuous shine. We always have to shine. We can't shine for a little bit. We have to always shine. Jesus just says shine. No matter the circumstance or the people you're around, no matter your lack of confidence or your own fear, just shine. Uh, God has placed each and every one of us right where we are for a reason. Uh, God has put you in certain groups of people in certain communities to shine. And Dad talked about families this morning. God has put us within our families to shine our light to our families. Um, God needs us to shine right where we are. 
when we do shine, when we get over our fear to shine, we're going to have a much bigger impact than we, than we could have ever imagined. Uh, so my second biggest point from Uplift is that our motives matter. So this was another main point of a class that we had one day at Uplift. So the basis behind this point is, so deep down inside we all have motives for things that we do. We don't just wake up and decide to do things on a whim. We have a reason behind what, what we do. So one extreme example of this in the Bible is from Genesis 4. We all know the story of Cain and Abel. Cain hated Abel. He was so jealous of Abel. Like he didn't, he didn't just wake up one day and was like, today is a really good day. Let me just go kill my brother. He had a motive behind it. His hatred and his jealousy towards Abel was what led him to kill his brother. And as we can see from Cain, having the wrong motives for how we treat others can lead us to dangerous places. And having the wrong motives for shining our light and having the wrong motives for everything that we do ultimately leads us to sin. So in a similar yet different way, we need to figure out what our motive is, what our reason for being a light is. Uh, so in this class, the speaker had this phrase that was the main point. Uh, it, it says, the why of what we do matters just as much as what we do. He said, the why of what we do matters just as much as what we do. So we need to ask ourselves, why? When I shine my light, why do I do it? Why do I shine? Do I do it so that other people can glorify me? Do I do it so that I'll be accepted within a certain group of people? Uh, and if our answers to those questions are yes, then we certainly, we certainly have the wrong motive for being a light. Uh, in the same verse we read just, just a second ago, Matthew says the motive for shining our light is so that others may see your good works. But he doesn't, he doesn't finish that sentence with, and give glory to you. Matthew does, Matthew does not say, Drew should shine his light so that other people will glorify Drew. He finishes that passage with, shine your light so that they may see your good works and... Give glory to your Father who is in heaven, not yourself. And so when we shine, we are ultimately glorifying God. So when we shine, we have to put others' interests and God's interests before our own. Uh, and there is no better example of someone who shined their light so that they could put God's up, so they could put God's interests and others' interests before us, before Himself, than Jesus. Uh, in Philippians chapter two, Paul says, "Do nothing out of out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves." Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. By taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
Um, so there, here, now that we have learned to get over our own fear to shine, and now that we have figured out why we should shine, now we're going to talk about some ways that we can shine. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ones up here. Like that one says, smile, give to charity, be selfless, be positive, buy someone a meal, visit a shut-in, pray for others, be kind every time, give someone a hug, and just have a good attitude. There are so many different ways to shine your light, like immense ways that I couldn't even put on the slide. But one of the easiest ways to shine is just by keeping in touch with people. Uh, just by texting somebody, giving them a phone call, that just lets them know that you care, that you're there if you need anything, especially friends and family that are struggling, whether that be physically, mentally, emotionally, especially spiritually. Just reaching out and asking them if they need any help is going to be a whole lot. Um, so one of my favorite ways to shine is by uh, writing people cards. So uh, one day at Uplift, we had a lesson on the significance of handwritten cards. And we talked about how writing a card is just so meaningful because it takes a lot more effort than sending a text message. If you think about it, if you write a card, you gotta go to the store, pick you out a cute little card, and then you gotta write it, obviously, and then you have to put it in an envelope, you gotta address it, you gotta put the stamp on it, and then after all that, you have to send it to the post, and then it sends it how many ever miles to just encourage that one person that you want to encourage. It has to go through so much more. And another another plus of handwritten cards is that they're tangible. They're physical representations of encouragement. And they're physical representations of love. And I, I can't I can't go back and look at a text message from five years ago. That takes that takes forever. But I can I can open a card from five years ago and read it and get just as much as encourage just as much encouragement as I did the first time. Um, so at Camp Curios, we have a thing called the Heart to Heart Board, where we write little notes of encouragement to each other throughout the week. Uh, so you get a little sheet of paper, they look like this, and then you write somebody's name on it, and then you stick it on the Heart to Heart Board, and then over the week, people go by and they pick up ones that uh, have their name on it. Uh, so here, here's all my Heart to Hearts that I've, that I've gotten at camp. And they mean, they mean so much to me. Anytime I need any encouragement, anytime I need a boost, I can just read all these heart to hearts and just go through and just think about how much each person means to me. And just, I'm just encouraged. I, I just can't, I can't help but smile when I read these. It, it, they mean so much. Uh, so one day at Uplift, um, we were in our group devotional time. And our goal was to write a card. And so here's me and Patrick and Tabby writing our cards that day. The cards say, glad you're here, because we were supposed to write them to a person at Uplift with us. So, uh, and the Uplift staff mailed those, or they either mailed them, or we could give them to the people that were there. So they, they handled all that for us. So there are so many different ways that you can shine your light. Uh, I mean, that's a smile up there. You can shine your light by smiling at somebody in the grocery store or in the drive-thru, whatever. No, you can shine your light wherever you are. Uh, you, you're never going to know how much somebody needs to see your light on any given day. And you're never going to know how big of an impact your light, your smile, whatever, made on them. So God has put a light within all of us. And God gives us the power, and God gives us the outlet in which we can shine. So the question is, will you? Will you be the person to stand up against sin? Will you be the ones to be different than the world that we live in? Will you be the ones to shine? My, my final verse this evening is from Psalms 18, verse 28, and it says, You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness 
into light. So we see from that verse that when light shines in the darkness, it never destroys the darkness. The light transforms the darkness. Light doesn't transform the darkness. But when light is shined, it transforms the darkness into light itself. So the more we shine in our dark world, the more our dark and sinful world is transformed into the light, into God's light. So if you've been if you've been living in darkness, it's time to come home to the light. Uh, if we can help you come back to the light tonight, we're about to sing our invitation song. Uh, if you're ready to become a Christian tonight, we would love, love to baptize you into Christ so that you can go out in the world and shine your own light for the glory of our God. Uh, we invite you all to come as we stand and sing. This is the Lord.